welcome to the Lazy Ass Librarian, a book review series by lazy people for lazy people. If you're like me, you like to read, but you don't want to put a whole lot of effort into it for whatever reason. I'm a slow reader and a busy person, and with the oversaturation of entertainment media in today's culture, it's hard to devote a lot of my attention to a single thing for longer than an hour or two. If you're like me, you've probably also read the first few chapters of a book, only to find out that that book sucked, and that you've wasted your valuable video game playing time reading that much crap. It has happened to me many times, friends, and I've often wished there was some reliable and like-minded person who would read the first few chapters of that overhyped new novel and let me know whether or not it was worth reading. Well, fear not, brave listeners. I'm here to do that for you. I'm personally endeavoring to read the first five chapters of the latest and greatest fictional books. What if they don't have five chapters, you ask? I'll read the equivalent. I'm here to serve you. Now, I don't believe in completely objective reviews, so what you'll be getting is my unfiltered, honest opinion based on everything I know about how a good book should be written. Take it or leave it. I don't know you, I don't know what you like, but I know good writing, and I know what I like. So, that's what I'm giving to you. Well, without further ado, I would like to introduce my first book. The book I have chosen is King Dork by Frank Portman. Now listeners, never let it be said that I'm anything but honest. In the interest of full disclosure, I have to admit that prior to coming up with the idea for this review series, I had already read King Dork twice, in fact. That's right, I, the self-avowed, lazy, slow reader, have read this 344-page novel twice, including the glossary and the list included in the back. Why? Because it's freaking awesome, that's why. Frank Portman, through his character Tom Henderson, aka Chai Mo, or Mo for short, paints a vivid and powerful tale of intrigue and mystery, all wrapped within the confines of a high school filled with terrifying normal people. The story, as described by the main character in the intro of the book, is actually kind of a complicated story involving at least half a dozen mysteries, plus dead people, naked people, fake people, teen sex, weird sex, drugs, ESP, Satanism, books, blood, Bubblegum, guitars, monks, faith, love, witchcraft, the Bible, girls, a war, a secret code, a head injury, the crusades, some crimes, mispronunciation skills, a mystery woman, a devil head, a blowjob, and rock and roll. It pretty much destroyed the world as I had known it up to that point, and I'm not even exaggerating all that much. I swear to God. So basically, listeners, what we're dealing with is your average high school tale. In the opening chapters, we are introduced to Tom Henderson, a high school sophomore at Hillmont High, where he seems to be the only intelligent person enrolled on the staff or even anywhere near the general premises. We must keep in mind, however, that Tom is the narrator and the principal character and the only point of view we are ever presented, and even he seems to change his mind over the course of the novel. Of course, we're not talking about the entire novel here, just the first five chapters. Anyway. Life, high school, and the psychotic normal people all seem to be out to kill Tom. Or, at the very least, make his life a living hell. Tom is small, weak, easily bullied, and has a dead dad. And the nickname everyone calls him, Mo, is abbreviated from Chai Mo, which is abbreviated from Child Molester. Tom's only friend is Sam Hellerman, who is only his friend because his name, for several years, was alphabetically before Tom's. In fact, the only thing the two seem to have in common is their tendency to be picked on and their enjoyment of the same type of music. They have a band, more or less, and a recurring theme in the novel is their changing the band's name, members, and album design, even though they can barely play music and they don't know any drummers. In fact, they change their names so often throughout the book that at the end, Portman was kind enough to include all the names of the bands, both present in the novel and implied to have occurred without the reader's knowledge during the novel. Some of the best include Helmet Boy, The Stoned Marmadukes, Ray Bradbury's Love Camel, and Sentient Beard. While the beginning is what could be described as slow and overly expositional, Tom's acid wit makes even the most mundane sentences hilarious and wonderful. Any reader who, like me, thoroughly enjoys sarcasm and Oscar Wilde caliber dry wit will find the narrative endlessly delightful. And maybe that's what makes this book, with its overly intricate plot, such an engaging read. You can't put it down once you've picked it up. It's just that interesting. For all my praising the book, however, 
I wouldn't be a true critic if I didn't point out some faults. This book is not for everyone, and I know this. Though it is thoroughly well-reviewed, its plot may confuse people reading it casually. And it contains strong language in several places, and explicit sexual encounters are described. There are also several instances of drug and alcohol abuse, but really, what's an account of high school without sex, drugs, and rock and roll? So here's my advice. If you're over 18, aren't offended by foul language, sexual and drug references, and let's face facts, folks, if you're listening to me right now, you probably aren't, and you want to read a kick-ass story, check this book out. I highly recommend it. And if not, shut the hell up and read it anyway, Nancy. You might actually enjoy it. Thank you. This has been your friendly neighborhood, Lazy Ass Library.